Hi, I'm Paul from The Studio Rats. Every time I release a guitar review video, I always get comments with things like, how thick is the neck? What is the neck radius? That neck is far too thick for me to play. I would never buy a guitar like that. That neck is far too thin. I would never buy a guitar like that. So what I thought I'd do is just to pick four extreme guitars and explain about the different neck thicknesses and the neck profiles and neck radiuses and just talk about my personal preference and why I don't think neck radius and neck thickness matters that much. Okay, so these are the four guitars we're gonna be looking at. First of all, we've got a 62 style Strat. Now this has a sort of vintage, sort of fairly thin neck and 7.25 inch radius. Then we've got a 57 Les Paul. This has a 12 inch radius, so it's a much flatter board and it has a really big, fat, chunky neck on it. Next, we've got a Sir Alt T. Now, this one's slightly different. This has a compound radius. It has a nine inch to 12 inch radius. So it starts off rounded and then goes fairly flat. And the Gristle Master, again, is a compound radius, 10 to 14 inch radius. And this has a much thinner neck. So let's start with this Les Paul. This is a 57 Custom Shop Gibson Les Paul. So it's basically an exact recreation of how they made guitars back in 1957. The neck on it is really chunky. Personally, I love a chunky neck, but personally, I like a thin neck. It doesn't bother me, and that's the point of this video. I went on Amazon and I bought one of these digital calipers so we can measure the neck thickness. Now, I know technically we should be taking the strings off for this, but because my guitars have similar actions, uh, the, the measurements are going to be quite relative to each other. First of all, let's measure this Les Paul. So I don't know if you can see that, but basically it's 25 millimeters. Now, if I change that to inches, 0.98 of an inch. As I said earlier, this neck is quite chunky. <laughs> There are benefits that some people believe to having a thick neck and there are negatives to some people having a thick neck. Personally, I think it fits the hand really, really well. My hands, I've got sort of average size hands and this neck fits my hand perfectly. I do believe a thicker neck changes the tone. I'm not saying it makes it any better. This Reverend guitar, which I'm gonna pull out in a minute, has a very thin neck, but I also think that has a great tone. I don't think a thicker neck makes the tone any better. It just makes it different. The thing that I think is more important with a guitar neck is the radius of the fingerboard. A Gibson Les Paul like this has a radius of 12 inches. It's a flat fingerboard compared to, say, like my Fender Strat that's over there. So the pluses and minuses of having a flat fingerboard. One thing, it's easier to bend on a flatter fingerboard. And because it's consistent all throughout the neck, it feels the same when you're bending further up the neck as it does. When you're bending lower down. Now, if I pick up my Strat, this is a 62 style Strat. If I measure the, uh, the thickness of this neck, this is 21.8 millimeters or 0.86 inches. Now, the Strat neck really differs from the Les Paul. The Strat neck, a vintage Strat neck, has a 7.25 radius fingerboard. So that means that it's curved. It's got a more sort of rounded profile on it. Now, this is great for open chords. And for bar chords, because your hand naturally follows the curve of the neck. So we've done a traditional Les Paul and a traditional Strat. So next, let's bring up this guitar. This is a Sir Alt T. And the difference between this and the Strat and the Les Paul is that this has a compound radius. So a compound radius means it has a more rounded profile towards the neck. And as we come down towards the body of the guitar, it becomes flatter. So it's almost like the perfect combination. So we can get all the comfortable chord playing down the bottom of the neck. But as we come up the neck, it becomes more of a flatter profile, which you could say it's more of a sort of shredder type of profile of guitar. If I measure this neck, so what's that? That's, that's 0.93 inches and in millimeters. That's 23.8. This neck is a real modern sort of feel about it. It's quite a wide neck and 
it's not thin, it's definitely got a bit of chunk to it, but not like the Les Paul at all. But it definitely feels more modern than the other two guitars. Things start to get easier on this guitar when you start to get up, say, to the ninth, tenth fret and beyond. <laughs> And that's where it starts to get flatter, so it starts to become a little bit easier to play, say, faster runs. So let's have a look at certain techniques that are easier on certain guitars than other guitars. If I go back to the Les Paul. Personally, I find certain guitar techniques easier on certain guitars. So if I'm playing legato, like this. It's much easier on a Les Paul. Let's pick up the Strat and play the same thing. That is definitely easier on the Les Paul, there's no doubt about that. But I wouldn't think, well hold on a second, I'm gonna be playing a legato riff, so I'm gonna pick up the Les Paul. That wouldn't even occur to me, I would just do it on the Strat. I'd have to work a little bit harder, but it wouldn't make me change the guitar. And this is my point about people asking about neck profiles and neck radiuses. Personally, I would never choose a guitar over how thick the neck is and what the radius or what the profile of the neck is. Now, before I'd even think about neck profiles and neck thickness, I would always pick a guitar, one for the tone of it. I could pick up a variety of different strats, especially vintage style strats, older strats, and you would definitely find good ones and bad ones. Same with Les Pauls, the same with any guitar, really. More modern production techniques has made that a little bit less important I think there are a lot more guitars now that are pretty standard across the board. Second, I pick a guitar over the functionality of it. So for instance, if I wanted a particular sound out of the guitar, a Les Paul sounds very, very different to a Strat. I can't do stuff on a Les Paul that I can do on a Strat. One thing, a Strat's got a tremolo, it's got single coils. The Strat is, for me, is way better for clean sounds. The Les Paul just sounds great doing sort of classic rock stuff. Lastly, I'm gonna pick up this Reverend Gristlemaster. This is the Greg Koch uh, signature model. Now this is quite an unusual guitar because I would imagine someone like Greg Koch to have a more sort of vintage or to like a more vintage sort of style neck as he's more that sort of vintage style player. Now this is quite an unusual neck as it's thicker up at the headstock end than it is down at say the, uh, the 12th fret. And it's also got a compound radius. So again, it's more curved at this end and it's flatter at this end. So if I measure the thickness, That's 0.92 inches, and if I change that to millimeters, that's 23.3. So as we get further down the neck, it is a thin neck. It's definitely the thinnest neck guitar that I own. But again, I don't struggle to play this guitar because it's got a thinner neck than my other guitars. It's just different. And that's the thing about guitar necks and profiles and radiuses. Personally, I think find the guitar that you like the sound of and learn to play that guitar. I think you become a far more accomplished player if you can pick up any guitar as opposed to pick up a guitar and say, I couldn't play that because the neck's far too thick or the fingerboard has a far too rounded radius. The only exception that I can see is if you've got an injury or if you've got arthritis, something that you're gonna find more comfortable I can definitely understand someone that you know can't actually put their hand in that position so if you have an injury or arthritis I definitely think it's worthwhile trying to find a neck radius and a neck thickness that you're going to find comfortable to play over long periods of time I really hope you guys got something out of that video if you did get something out of the video perhaps you consider liking and subscribing we're getting really close to 20,000 subscribers so every like and every subscriber really makes a massive difference and if you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see from the Studio Rats, please leave a comment in the comment below. I'm Paul from the Studio Rats and I'll see you next time. Cheers.